Hi, Lonnie Vaughn with Emotive Audio here, and today we're going to continue our discussion on the science of sound. If you were with us in our last video, we kind of walked through the basic system, and today we're going to delve deeper into the preamp. Now we're going to get into home theater preamps on a later video, but today let's start with the two-channel preamp. And if, what I have in front of me is a TA2, which is a preamp, but it's also got a built-in amplifier, but we're going to focus just on the preamp section. And to help explain what a preamp is, from my last video, if you remember, a preamp is anything that goes ahead of the amplifier itself. In this case, the core design of any preamp is it's going to select your sources, and it's going to control the level, and it may have a bunch of other features, but its very basic core is selection and control. What you got here is just give you a basic rundown here. We've got CD player, I've got my portable AP here just being used as a tone generator, and we got a scope here so we can visually see what's going on. Now I built the most rudimentary basic preamp here, just to help explain what's going on. And at its core, what do we got? A switch to select our source. Now right now, that's a CD player. If I go there, now we're looking at the audio precision, which is easier to see because it's putting on a constant sine wave. Now with this, I can actually control the level. Isn't that nice? Nice and smooth. So there you go, there's a preamp. Now if you might look at that, and you might ask yourself, what do you need all of this? Well, at its core, if you think about it, this right here, and I actually put a mute circuit in here. This doesn't have a mute circuit. It doesn't have a lot of other features that you would find on a modern day preamp. And why would you need that mute circuit? Well, quite honestly, I put it in here in case we actually had this hooked to speakers because if I was to switch between that and that, and it was actually tied to an amp, it'd probably knock you out of your chair by going thump. So you'd normally just mute it Switch your source, mute re release, and now you're back online. Modern day preamps have really come a long way. They now have an enormous amount of versatility. They're extremely quiet. This, by the way, is not. They're extremely low noise, very quiet. You've got phono stage, which has a lot of gain in it. You've got actually additional gain in the preamp stage because by themselves, these sources actually won't drive your amp to full power. You actually need a little bit of gain. So there's a small little amplifier built into the preamp section to give you that additional gain when you need it. You also have multiple inputs, not just two. You've got DACs, you've got um, HDMI, you've got all kinds of sources that you can select from in the system today, even Bluetooth, you know, whatever you like. They're made in such a way to optimize the short signal path to keep noise out. What do you want to look for in a preamp? That's really important. You really want to look for a preamp that has a cylinder noise ratio greater than 100. You want to look for a preamp that has at least two volts of output stage or two volts of output drive or more. You want to look for a one that has a THD of well below 1%. Don't get hung up on the numbers. Too many people get hung up on the numbers. You know, is it 0 0.01 versus 0 0.001 THD? Well, the truth is, it doesn't matter. You can't hear it when it's below 1%. Is a preamp that has 105 dB of cylinder noise versus 115 Again, you're not going to hear it. So don't get too hung up on the numbers. Numbers are a good reflection of how well it was designed and how well they thought it out and worked on it and what all went into it. But don't rely on numbers being the end-all, be-all. What you want to look for is what does it do for you? What all features does it have? Does it do everything you want it to do? And does it meet the basic criteria, 1% or less of THD? 100 dB of cylinder noise or better. Two volts of output drive, because you've got to have plenty to drive your amp. Everything that we do has got 
way beyond those basic elements, you know, as far as what you need. But you need to look at what all else does it do. Does it have Bluetooth? Is that what you want? Do you, does you want HDMI ARC? Do you, are you looking for a really good DAC? You know, look for those particular things. Those are really important because that's what you're actually buying it for, is to do the things you want. Now, one last thought. If you notice, this one's all hooked up with RCAs. If I was to do a balanced one, I'd actually have to have twice the parts. Again, depending upon the preamp that you choose, you either want to go balanced or unbalanced. And if you're not sure what you need or what you want to go with, I did a video on differential reference that actually explains all the differences and what you should be looking for in that regard. So I hope that helps you out. Hope that gives you a basic idea. With everything that's going on, it really comes down to just a few core elements. But as you move forward, we're gonna get into some deeper items. And I hope this was informative to you and helpful. Happy listening.